It is now time to move on to open source where we sort of dig into what goes into writing a story. And this is the whole reason I've been trying to get you on mm -hmm. for weeks now, mm -hmm. Mara, is you've spent, God, I don't even know how much time at this point, months and months and months. You went skydiving for this story. Yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, which I want to hear about a little <laughs> bit later. Um, so you spent months and months now building this whole story uh, around the Cybathlon uh, in this multi-part video series we've published called Superhumans. There's a whole bunch of written articles to go along with it. The last installment of that... Is up today. Goes up today. Mm -hmm. Well... It's on the site. Today, we are shooting this on a Thursday. Yeah. So by the time the people at home are watching or listening to this, it will have gone up yesterday. Yep. Uh, and you should watch all of them and read all of them. Uh, they are so, so good. Uh, but let's start with a really basic thing. Mona, what is the Cybathlon? Okay. Um, so it's actually the world's first sporting event that's sort of dedicated to people with disabilities um, who use kind of really experimental robotic technologies to sort of enhance their bodies and sort of get around everyday lives. Um, and I know that a lot of people initially sort of confused it with the Paralympics because they're like, hey, that's where a lot of the similar stuff happens. But the difference basically is that the Paralympics is for passive technologies. But the Cybathlon is actually sort of trying to push innovation. So they wanted to see what exists out there. So they sort of looped in a bunch of research universities, um, sort of research groups from universities, a lot of big corporates that already make and sell um, prosthetics and exoskeletons. And they kind of brought all of those in, and they're all powered technologies. So they rely heavily on like really sort of cutting edge sensors and computers. Um, so that was basically the biggest difference, um, because this actually wouldn't be allowed in any other global contest as of now. So they needed their own, and they built it. Um, and it was organized by ETH Zurich, which is one of the biggest um, technical universities in Europe. Okay. Uh, so what are some of the th what are some of the competitions that the the athletes would do? So they actually had um, they chose six disciplines. Um, there was leg prosthetics, arm prosthetics, exoskeleton rays. There was powered wheelchairs, um, which is obviously very different from the wheelchairs we regularly sort of see on the streets. Um, these were sort of prototypes to climb steps. Um, then there was also a bike race, which was absolutely fascinating to watch. It was for people with complete paralysis, but they basically used sensors and implants, which kind of sync their bodies with the recumbent bikes in a way that they could actually pedal and race around the tracks. Um, and another one, the sixth one, was the brain-computer interface. This was actually kind of mind-boggling because I saw it at the event, and it was like a bunch of people sort of sitting motionless in their wheelchairs and staring at their screens, and they had a lot of sort of sensors um, on a cap on their heads. And they were actually moving this avatar in a game just purely by the power of their thoughts. Um, so this is sort of a novel thing that they're experimenting with, and they had a discipline dedicated to that. Um, and so what, what are the actual competitions they're trying to do with, like, the prosthetic ar leg prosthetics and the arm prosthetics? They're they just, like, foot races or...? No, I think the whole, the whole point of them doing this event was to sort of see how people get by in everyday lives. So the task was sort of built around that. Um, for, for example, people with an arm prosthetic had to sort of go over to a breakfast table and sort of open a jar because that's one of the hardest things to do with a prosthetic arm. Or um, people with a leg prosthetic had to go over different services and balance on that. So it was all laid out in a way that you could sort of see how these technologies perform every day for these people and how they should get better. So I actually really like that. So um, when we were in sort of the pre-production stage of this whole project, there were dozens of teams that you could have possibly interview. That was one of the trickier aspects, at least yeah. that I recall, was even deciding which of these many teams you wanted to focus on. Yeah, there were about 74 teams that I was sort of um, looking through and trying to find the right stories. Um, but I think in the end, I mean, not to say that all of them weren't interesting. There were a lot of interesting technologies being built, but I kind of had to choose um, based on the ones that were either most experimental or most established. Because I also wanted to contrast that because they're bringing that out in the event, right? They're bidding these sort of uh, bootstrapped research labs with these big corpus that have huge resources. So it was interesting to sort of contrast that and see how a small team makes it work and how a big corpus sort of builds something new for it, which is why I sort of went with Team Cleveland. Um, they represented America. 
in the bike race. And they were the only team in the bike race discipline that actually had surgically implanted sensors. Everyone else had superficial ones on the skin. And they actually won the race because I believe the because of the way it was implanted, the technology, the way it communicates with the machine and the bike, I mean, you can't sort of compare it to what's already superficial on the skin because it directly stimulates the muscles. So there was like a lot of interesting things to sort of work with. But yeah, I guess that was my reasoning for picking the teams that we did. And how many teams did we end up following in total? We followed four pilots. Um, we went to Iceland to sort of um, feature one of the biggest uh, leg prosthetic makers called Osser. We followed a German pilot, um, Andre van Rishon, um, who wore the exoskeleton suit from Rewalk. We did Team Cleveland, and we also did... Um, this incredible um, skydiver. She's known as the one-handed skydiver in Europe. Um, she was representing touch bionics so with the arm prosthetic. So that takes us to you <laughs> jumping out of a plane for work. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe I did that, but I think I sneakily always wanted to do it. So this was like my um, opportunity because she was, it was, so we actually shot this episode with her at the German National Skydiving Contest, which was such an incredible experience because it's a world, it's a, it's a totally different world from what like you can even imagine. They should make a movie about this. Um, there's like hundreds of people just like jumping out of the sky. Every time you look up, there's like someone falling from a different direction. It's, it's actually beautiful to oh. watch. And it feels so normal when you're there. You're like, oh, there's like so many people just falling. Uh, what does that feel like? <laughs> and, and our subject herself was like such an enthusiastic skydiver. that She kind of talked me into it. So, yeah, I hopped on a plane with her and jumped out of a plane. So you weren't, like, interviewing her as you were falling through the air, <laughs> right? That was the plan, but it didn't quite work out like that. <laughs> a little no. too loud while you're falling? Basically, yeah. Uh, and, and, and you t took uh, one of the other members of our team with you too, right? Uh, well, I wanted to. Um, a cinematographer, Shivani. Um, who, is, who is hiding behind the camera <laughs> for those who are watching yep. at home. Um, she kind of got out of it the first day, um, but she did. Uh, we did try to put her on the plane the next day, and she got all suited up, and she was ready to hop on the plane when there was a skydiving accident. And a girl basically fell to the tarmac and broke a lot of bones. Oof. So they canceled the plane rides, and yeah, I think it was wise to not send her on the plane after that. Uh, that wasn't she, fun. How did she get out of it the first time? Oh, because she had to shoot the landing. Uh, <laughs> so it was a logistical issue. or Sneaky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's pretty sneaky. <laughs> she conveniently decided to shoot from the ground. <laughs> uh, so how did you like skydiving, by the way? This is, this is completely off yeah, topic, but I'm um, interested. I loved it, uh, but I don't think I'll do it again. No? No. It's one of those things that you do, at least for me, I did it once. Um, it, it was super scary. But honestly, it was different from what I'd imagined. Like, you know how people say, you feel like a bird. No, you don't. It's pretty freaking scary up there. You're free falling. Um, I did a tandem jump, so I had another um, skydiver with me. So no, um, I didn't feel like a bird. So no, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to go back up there. No, I'm Dana, done. would you jump out of a plane? In my fantasies, but any time, <laughs> the, the few times I've, I've been offered to go along, I've always turned it down. I don't know if I'll ever actually do it. Yeah. I think everyone should do it once, to be honest. It's um, quite an experience. I'm getting like heart palpitations just thinking. <laughs> I don't about even it right like <laughs> I don't even like roller coaster drops, so I probably wouldn't oh, enjoy mm, this. Maybe not. <laughs> That's where I'm at. Yeah. I'm a wuss. Um, yeah, I, w I won't get on a roller coaster. My wife has been trying to get me to go jump out of a plane with her for a couple of years now. Yeah. Uh, after talking to you and Shivani about your experience with it, um, I think that was kind of the nail in the coffin that I'm not doing. It. It's just nail in the coffin. Happen. Yeah. Oh, God, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> she lived, though, right? Yeah, she okay. did. I recently followed up on that. And okay. she, oh, that's she's, nice of you. She's okay. Good. Yeah. Good. I feel, I feel slightly less terrible about my, <laughs> my choice of uh, metaphor there. Um, <laughs> so other than skydiving, what were some of the other highlights for you? I think the highlights were... For an event that was making its debut, I think it was incredibly well organized. Um, they had so much that could go wrong with it um, in terms of, you know, you're handling a lot of over 70, 75 people with disabilities and they come with a lot of medical teams and stuff. They're handling a lot of technology and experimental technology, which they didn't really know if it was going to work. So it's, it was a lot of work and I was really impressed with the way they pulled it off. 
I think also uh, just the reaction from the crowd. It was incredible to watch. They were just so into it. Um, it was a really gripping event too because there were a lot of disappointments, of course, because a lot of pilots sort of, you know, the technology failed or they couldn't make it over the obstacles, but just the energy of the crowd and every time they were cheering equally for someone who won and someone who stumbled. So it was just like a whole sort of great sense of community there as well, which I think is what they were trying to get at and yeah. they kind of achieved. So that was nice. So what was sort of the presentation like? Because um, you say that, that they're there's the crowd that's really into it and they're cheering and it's this very gripping event. Um, and not that I don't doubt you, that I doubt you, but in my head, it's hard to imagine how a competition that involves opening a jar can be like really gripping and get a crowd riled up. Um, because it was all timed and they're going head to head, um, there's like four tracks laid out in the middle. So there's always four pilots racing each other. So there's that sort of thing to watch where one person gets ahead, the other doesn't. Um, and also it's timed, so you know they have to complete it within a certain stipulated time. So that makes it exciting because they can't exactly take an hour to open it. It has to be a lot quicker than they would actually probably take in their everyday life. So it's it's a timed event. It's it's a proper sporting event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was it like a big production? Was there like people doing announcements and all that oh, stuff? Oh yeah, this was huge. It was um, televised by the Swiss national television. There were huge camera crews. There were commentators. Um, there were over a thousand volunteers who were just sort of helping out with this. It was it was a massive production, and they plan to bring it back like four years from now, make it a running thing, S similar to the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. and they kind of timed it that way too. That it's always going to be Olympics, Paralympics, and then the Cybathlon. So it's going to be like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh man, I'm so excited to watch the last episode. Yeah, um, it turned out pretty great. I'm happy with it. Good. I'm. I like when people like what they do. That like yeah. makes me super happy, and I think <laughs> it comes through uh, in in the piece. Um, we will obviously have links to all of that stuff mm -hmm. um, in the description, in the post, or whatever. Um, you have to go read it. You have to go watch it. Uh, it's just really excellent. It's w one of the things uh, I th I'm most proud of that we've done, mm -hmm. honestly, as a site. Thank you. Me too. Um, Dana, do you have any last thoughts or questions? Um, just that people should um, look for more of that from us. That was our first ever documentary series, um, but not our last mm -hmm. as part of our uh, Engadget R&D labs yeah who knows what will or yep. you will um, <laughs> dive into sorry di I didn't know no pun intended <laughs> yeah, what you will delve into, into next time <laughs> <laughs> nothing makes me happier than Dana making puns because I hate puns you do no puns um, do you have your next thing all queued up at this point you're, you're, you I'm working on stuff? it working I have a bunch it? of ideas yeah. okay we'll, we'll, we'll talk we'll talk later yeah <laughs> Wanna, don't want to give away everything. Um, so yes, definitely go read and watch that stuff. It's super, super excellent. 